Good evening. Once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. Going to do another video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. But first, a word of prayer. Father, I just ask you to use this video in a miraculous way to reach the lost, to wake up the sleeping. And to encourage the body of Christ. And I just pray again for the unsaved family members and loved ones of my subscribers. As time is getting short. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, this is another, again, just very important video I want to get out there. Uh about the Vatican, about Pope Francis, about the climate change thing, about just all sorts of, the New World Order, it's it's all coming together. And, and again, it is so important to continue to just spread this truth, tell people what's going on, pray for the anointing power of the Holy Spirit upon you and, and, and uh, the boldness to continue to sound the alarm to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and <laughs> to shed light continue to shed light on the de on the deception and the evil agenda that Pope Francis is promoting right now there is so much uh going on right now coming together that will result in the new world order, the one world government. So with that, let's just get right into it. Um, <laughs> Pope, the first article. Pope Francis says charity isn't enough. True Christians give all their money to the poor. First of all, before I even read this article... <laughs> How, how how hypocritical is that coming from quite frankly the wealthiest organization on the planet and again home of the corrupt Vatican Bank Pope Francis is without a doubt a communist he's a marxist he's promoting Karl Marx theory there's no question about it and we're, let's just let's just you know get right into this, and then I'm going to get into some, into some scripture. Uh, but Pope Francis does not know what the true gospel is. If he does, I've never heard him explain it. And this story right here certainly is not the true gospel. Uh, so again, let's get into it, and we'll get into a little bit of scripture. Pope Francis says, Handing over wealth to the poor is Christianity, not communism. Pope Francis told Catholics. The Pope struck back during Mass Tuesday at critics who accused him of promoting socialist ideals, saying that they misunderstood the Gospel's central theme, said the National Catholic Reporter. Poverty is precisely at the heart of the Gospel, Pope Francis said. If we were to remove poverty from the Gospel, people would understand nothing about Jesus' message. Wow. That is not the gospel message. Yes, true Christians are charitable and do try to help take care of the poor and, and love their neighbor. But that's not the gospel message. Let's move on. He urged Catholics to share their wealth of the heart, which he said Christ taught and offered to everyone by sharing the wealth in their wallet. When the faith doesn't reach your pockets, it's not a genuine faith, the Pope said. Pope Francis reminded Christians that Jesus became poor and eventually sacrificed his own life to save humanity. But he said charity is not enough. Christian poverty is that I give to the poor what is mine, not just what is left over, but even that which I need for myself because I know that he enriches me, he said. 
Why does the poor person enrich me, the Pope continued, because Jesus said that he himself is in the poor. He said Christ works within those who give up their attachment to worldly possessions, telling Catholics that giving to others would enrich them. Just as Jesus gave of himself in the Eucharist, he became bread for us, the Pope said. Well, no, he didn't, actually. The, 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 the doctrine of transubstantiation is false. It's a lie. I've got other videos on that. In fact, I might post that in, my, in, the, in the, link, the link to that video in the description box so you can read that. I just recently covered that. It was symbolic. Jesus died on the cross, suffered and died on the cross, shed his body, he shed his blood on the cross for us, and we have communion in remembrance of that. Jesus didn't actually tell priests to turn his body into physical bread to eat and the wine into his blood. That is a lie. We'll get in, but again, I will put that link to another video on that, a study I did on that into this description box. Uh, let's see. Pope Francis explained that the theology of poverty, which forms the heart of the gospel, goes far beyond ideology, such as communism, which he has criticized in the past as spiritually inadequate. It is precisely this mystery, the mystery of Christ, who lowered himself, was humiliated, made himself poor, in order to enrich us, he said. This guy can say nothing. He, 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 he can give so many sermons and, and speeches that say absolutely nothing. They certainly have no real truth in them, no real substance. Again, absolutely, we should take care of the poor. But should, should there be a one-world government and a one-world economic system forcing you to... To give up everything for the good of common for the common good of humanity is is taking away from all the productive citizens and and corporations and nations and making everybody poor. Is that really going to help anybody? Absolutely not. But that's exactly where we're headed. That's exactly what Pope Francis is promoting. This is not the gospel. Let's get into a little bit of scripture, and then I'll get, I will share the gospel at the end of this message, as I always do. But let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, because it seems that Pope Francis would like you to think that if you do good works and you give your money to the poor, that that will somehow give you eternal life. We cannot work our way to heaven. Uh, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Uh, as I'm turning to another scripture... I want to remind everybody that Pope Francis said last year that it is dangerous to try to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Pope Francis and the Catholic Church teach that you have to have the Catholic Church for your salvation. That Jesus, somebody told a Catholic told me in a debate a few weeks ago that Jesus died so that through the, his church, which is Catholicism, you can have eternal life. No, Jesus died for anybody on this earth who believes in him. You can go straight to him and, be, and receive eternal life. You don't need Catholicism. You certainly don't need Pope Francis in the Vatican. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. <clears throat> if you are in Christ, and you are in Christ by coming to the cross, accepting Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, his resurrection is your salvation, forgiveness for your sin, being born again, turning to Jesus in faith, and becoming a new creation. That, that writes your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, that makes you a born-again Christian, a true believer, a true follower of Jesus Christ. And again, it has 
absolutely nothing to do with Catholicism or the Vatican or Pope Francis or religious ritual. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So you can go give everything you own, and the rest of the money you're going to make the rest of your life to charity. You can go work at a refugee camp the rest of your life and volunteer your time. And if you have not been born again and turned to Jesus Christ in faith, you will still wind up in hell. You must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I have yet to ever hear Pope Francis preach the true gospel. I was raised Catholic and for 12, I went through 12 years of, grade, of Catholic school, all grade school, high school. Never heard the gospel message until I read the Bible for myself. And that's very sad. Most Catholics have no concept of what, what its salvation entails and what it's all about. It's about Jesus Christ and faith in Jesus Christ. Let's move on. <clears throat> this is a this next story I covered some last night, but it's a follow up. Vatican uh, wrong hold one moment. Vatican climate change speaker wants Earth Constitution an individual CO two budget. I'm going over this because of an organization that this mentions, and then I'm going to get into that. Um, this is out of the Global Research Council, Center for Research on Globalization. Vatican climate change speaker wants Earth Constitution individual CO2 budget. On June 8th, the Vatican is scheduled to release Pope Francis' letter addressing climate change to the rule. One of the speakers who will present the letter is Professor John Schnellenhuber, founding uh, director of the post of the Postdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. He has advised German President and Angela Merkel on the threat of global warming. As reported by Breitbart, the professor has stated that the world is overpopulated by 6 billion people. He is well known for promoting draconian measures to combat climate change. In 2009, he proposed a CO2 budget for every individual on the planet. He has also put forth a master plan for transforming society that involves creating a system of world government, including an earth constitution, a global council, and a planetary court. Global warming science itself is surrounded by fraud. There is also a globalist agenda that is depending on the survival of the idea of global warming. Now get this, this is very important. In a 1991 report titled, The First Global Revolution, published by the Club of Rome, that's very important, we find the following statement. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, again, this is a statement from the Club of Rome, in a report titled The First Global Revolution, they say, In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. That's directly from a report published by the Club of Rome. In the 1970s, the Ruled Order Models Project, the Ruled Order Models Project, financed by the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and the Rockefeller Foundation, proposed strategies of transition into a new global era. Saul H. Uh, Mendelowitz, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, directed the project. Richard A. Falk, also a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, contributed academic work. One of the goals of the project was to use symbolic leaders of the world to promote the globalist ideas and break down decades of adherence to the Westphalian system and its infrastructure of values, perceptions, and institutions. The project specifically named the Pope as a potential spokesman for the agenda. Now, obviously, we can see now that Pope Francis is without a doubt the spokesman for this agenda. It says, get this, it says, if redistribution of wealth 
and personal CO2 budgets are in store for the West in response to climate change, its values, meaning the West, the West values, perceptions, and institutions most certainly need to be broken down. The West's values, perceptions, and institutions most certainly need to be broken down. And who is the spokesman for this agenda? The Pope. And it talks about the Club of Rome here. By the way, as I read that about how uh, <laughs> our, our values and perceptions need to change, it reminded me of a speech that Hillary Clinton gave uh, not too long ago, saying that our deep-seated religious beliefs and values must change. This is all coming together. But uh, this particular report, again, the first global revolution published by the Club of Rome, talking about how they created this whole uh, global warming and idea of pollution, global warming, and climate change to bring in this global new world order. Well... Let's go into the Club of Rome. I've done multiple videos about this, but I need to bring it up again because the Club of Rome has the world divided into a ten regions. As I was going back in to research some of that, uh, I came across this article, very, very interesting. It's called, Is Christ Soon to Return? out of WordPress.com. It says, Dividing the Globe into Ten Sections as Daniel prophesied. So the vision of Daniel in Daniel chapter 7 tells about the entire world being controlled by ten kings, out of which arise the one great ruler, the Antichrist, or the man of lawlessness, as Paul calls him in the letter to the Thessalonians. After my quotes of Daniel 7, you will see, you will then see an actual showing of, the, of how the club of Rome is doing exactly as Daniel predicted, dividing the globe into ten sections. Amazing, sure, but to be expected, of course, for the word of God stands eternal and forever settled in the heavens. Look up, church, our redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. Amen to that. Here it is, Daniel chapter 7, verse 11. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into a blazing fire. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit. And the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the true meaning of all this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kingdoms that will arise from the earth. Then I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and the most terrifying. And it's with its iron teeth and bronze claws, the beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the ten horns on its head and about the other horn that came up, before which three of them fell. The horn that looked more imposing than the others, and they had eyes, had a mouth that spoke boastfully. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms, and it will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will... Come from this kingdom. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. That is uh, Daniel chapter 7, verses 11, 15, 17, 19, and 23. And then I have uh, an article from jackvanimpy.com. And, and, and it says, under his quotation of the week, it says, The Club of Rome has planned to divide the world into ten sections. What, why are they doing it, uh, Jack, and how are they going to do that? Here's his answer. Well, first of all, the Bilderbergs in 1954 had the idea to create the United States of Europe, and that was, has become the European Union, and they're up to 27 nations. And Sarkozy of France says we wanted to get over 100. But when it hit 10 in 1991, when Greece joined, everyone said that was it. No, because the Bible teaches that we become global that this leader of the New World Order would devour the whole world, and that Daniel's, and that's Daniel 7.23. But the Bible also says that at the end there is going to be ten. So the Club of Rome, another secret organization, said we will divide the whole world into ten divisions, a ten-division global empire. And here they are. Region number one, America, Canada, and Mexico. Region number two, South America. Number three, Australia and New Zealand. Number four, 
Western Europe, number five, Eastern Europe, number six, Japan, number seven, South Asia, number eight, Central Asia, number nine, North Africa and all the Middle East, and number ten, the remainder of Africa. There they are, and we are headed for it. Now, let me go to some other scripture, because Daniel and Revelation go together. So let's go to Revelation uh, chapter 17. You could also read Revelation 13, but I'm going to go to Revelation 17, verses 1 to 5. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with, with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. Okay, uh, verse 4, The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. It's a perfect description of the Vatican, the Holy See, the cardinals, the bishops in their purple and scarlet, the gold and precious stones everywhere, and the golden cup or chalice that the Pope holds up. Perfect example. Um, let's, let's go to verse uh, 9 through 13. Revelation 17, verse 9 through 13. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Even Rome admits that's Rome. Rome is the city on seven hills. And there are seven kings, five are fallen and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a, for, a, a short space. But let's, let's go, um, yeah, okay, 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. We read about this in Daniel 7. Now we're reading about it in, in, in Revelation 17. And the ten horns which thou saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. They have one mind and shall give their power and strength to the beast. Finally, in uh, verse 18, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Again, Vatican City is both a city and its own sovereign country that reigns over the kings of the earth, which is why all the world leaders, including Vladimir Putin, just went there to talk to the Pope. The Vatican reigns over the kings of the earth. That is mystery Babylon, the false religious system of the end time. Uh, and the Club of Rome already has the rule divided into this ten division uh, breakdown. America, Canada, and Mexico is region number one. Daniel and Revelations all coming together. Again, it is going to be a global empire, a one world religion, and the whole globe is divided into the ten regions now. Now, let me go to one more story that I have covered in the past, but again, it's just more background. It ties all of this together. After America comes North America. This is out of the New American uh and it's about Dave, Gen, former General David Petraeus. It says, Former General and CIA Chief David Petraeus, a key figure in the Globalist Council on Foreign Rela Relations, which I just mentioned that in the previous article, and the shadowy Bilderberg Network, which, by the way, David Petraeus just attended the Bilderberg meeting last week again, boasted in a recent conference that the United States of America is set to be merged into the continental regime being erected under the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA. Speaking at the Margaret Thatcher Conference on Liberty last week in London, the ex-commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan and Iraq essentially celebrated the end of U.S. independence and, by ex extension, the demise of the Constitution. After America comes North America, Petraeus said confidently in answering the question about what comes after the United States. 
the theme of the panel discussion. Isn't that interesting that there would be a panel discussion about what comes after the United States? Are we on the threshold of the North American decade? Question mark. I threw that away. Threw that, I threw away the question mark and boldly proclaimed the coming North American decade, says the title now. He also boasted about how the three economies have been put together over the last 20 years as part of the implementation of the North American Free Trade Act. Uh, and this is a really interesting article. It goes back in talking about uh, illegal immigration and, and some things that Barack Hussein Obama has been up to and NAFTA and how it's all coming together. Um, I'm going to put this in the description box. I will put, I'm going to put a Mystery Babylon video I did into the description box. And I'm going to put a, the, a, the video that I did about uh, transubstantiation and the Eucharist into the description box. But guys, this is a former CIA uh, chief, general of our, our army, member of Council on Foreign Relations in the Bilderberg Group, who has flat out confirmed that there's assumed to be no more sovereign America is going to be part of North America. That's why I keep saying, and I'm going to continue to say, that I have, I, I'm almost 100% positive there will not be an election in 2016 that Barack Hussein Obama is the last American president. America is going to fall between now and the end of his second term. You see the preparation for that now with Jade Helm, and the preparation for martial law, the militarization of America, the impending collapse of the of the U.S. dollar, which may happen in September at the Shemitah, may happen on October 20th when there's a new global currency alternative to the U.S. dollar. But the economy is going to collapse, uh, and with it, no doubt, the world economy. America will be no longer. There will be enough uh, chaos within this nation that Barack Hussein Obama can, de can declare martial law and suspend the Constitution and, and, the, and there would not be an election. And again, I, I have to remind everybody that Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, who's running for president in, the, in this 2016 election, is on record as saying he will not be surprised that there is no election due to all the chaos that the Constitution could be suspended. It is absolutely time to wake up. These stories I share on a daily basis, I know they seem just like crazy conspiracy theory, that there's no way this could all happen. But I'm here to tell you, it's without a doubt 100% going to happen, because the Bible prophesied that it's going to happen. And just like when Jesus came the first time to the earth, he fulfilled over 300 prophecies to the letter, literally. He's going to fulfill all of them about his second coming, too. And, and there will be a one-world government and a one-world religion. And it's, we see it forming right before our very eyes. So it is absolutely time to make sure that you know you are ready. If you do not know for sure that you are saved, today is a day of salvation. You do not want to die in your sin. Jesus Christ came and died for you. He shed his blood on the cross for you, and that if you will turn to him in faith, you can have forgiveness of your sin and eternal life. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's, um, in fact, let's just run to uh, 1 Corinthians real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus himself said, He's the only way. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus will save you if you turn to him in faith. But he is the only source of salvation. There is no other source of salvation. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, <clears throat> Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is nothing we can do ever to be good enough to earn our salvation. Contrary to Pope Francis's message, you can give everything you own and ever will make to the poor, and that will not earn you salvation. If you turn to Jesus Christ in faith and allow him to change your heart and forgive you of your sin, then you'll be able to walk in the Spirit and you will be able to do good works, but those good works will not save you. They do not save you. They are just evidence of the Holy Spirit living in you. And the only way you get that is through faith in Jesus Christ. Turn to Him now while you still can. We are absolutely running out of time. We're living in the last days. You do not want to die in your sin. You will end up in eternity for hell. In, in, in hell for eternity. And you do not want to be left behind. Soon Jesus is going to come back for his church. Daniel's 70th week will begin. The time of Jacob's trouble. The worst time ever in the history of man. Jesus said if I didn't shorten the days. No flesh would be saved. You do not want to be here for that. And the good news is you don't have to be. If you are saved. You will be ready. Turn to Jesus while you still can. And keep looking up. God bless everyone.